M51 is the Whirlpool Galaxy. The Whirlpool Galaxy is arguably the most impressive galaxy for amateur astronomers. It is easy to locate with binoculars as it lies just over three degrees northwest of Alcade, the star at the end of the Big Dipper's handle. The Whirlpool is a face-on galaxy making its spiral structure easy to observe. A telescope, dark skies, and moderate power will begin to reveal the spiral arms. M51 has a bright central core, but no stars can be resolved. The core likely contains a supermassive black hole. Of special interest is the bridge of nebulosity that connects M51 to its companion galaxy NGC 5195. Recent research suggests that the gravitational pull of NGC 5195 is causing star formation in the Whirlpool Galaxy. Ooh, there it is. I'm going to go a little bit longer on the integration, a little bit more exposure. Uh, M51 and a companion NGC 5195. One more time. The Whirlpool Galaxy is arguably the most impressive galaxy for amateur astronomers. It is easy, easy to locate with binoculars as it lies just over three degrees northwest of Alcade. Alcade is the star at the end of the Big Dipper's handle. The Whirlpool is a face-on galaxy making its spiral structure easy to observe. A telescope, dark skies, and moderate power will begin to reveal the spiral arms. M51 has a bright central core, but no stars can be resolved. The core likely contains a supermassive black hole. Of special interest is the bridge of nebulosity that connects M51 to its companion galaxy NGC 5195. Recent research suggests that the gravitational pull of NGC 5195 is causing star formation in the Whirlpool Galaxy. So you can actually see on the right hand side of uh, M51 where it's got this square. You, you can see that the NGC 1595, 5195 is interacting with M51 because of that odd shape of the arm right there. There. There is like this uh, pressure between the two. I mean, we're talking, I mean, the time span it takes for these things to collide is like 1,500 times you. You know, it's like 5 billion times 90 years. If you were to live 90 years, it would take 5 billion times longer for anything to even happen in these places. So, will they think they will finally collide? Yes. One or the other will, will suck the energy out of the other. Yes. I mean, our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, is going to collide with a galaxy. It's, it, it's supposedly our galaxy right now is colliding with a dwarf galaxy. Uh, and there's another galaxy. Which one, which one is it? I probably know it at the top of my head, but I don't know it at the top of my head. The, the Milky Way is colliding, going to crash with its neighbor. Which, who's our neighbor? Oh, 
It's not Andromeda. It's not Andromeda, is it? Yes, it is. Andromeda and the Milky Way are coming together. They will collide. Yes. M31 collide. Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Latin Hicks like, yeah, I'll be, I'll be long gone. Come on. Bring your worst. I'll be long, long gone. Yep. Tim in Kansas is thanking Mr. Wizard. Thank you, Mr. Wizard, for all your help. For Tim in Kansas, his collimator batteries were going dead. Long gone. Five hundred billion years. There was a show, um, I don't know, you know, there's one of those shows on the box that talks back to us and shows pictures of people, not the computer. There was doing a history of the telescope, and it was really pretty interesting. And it is really true that, you know, it only has been a couple of hundred years since, and, and less since we realized that, you know, Earth wasn't the center of the universe, and then it went to the sun and then the galaxy and, and the, the universe wasn't just our galaxy and then our galaxy was just one of billions of other galaxies. Those realizations, those proofs, which were brought to us only through the use of telescopes, are still new and fresh for us human beings. And we have to recognize that most of us cannot actually handle all that information. <clears throat> in a way that does anybody any good except asking questions about why is it? Why, 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 why? Some things we are not meant to know. <clears throat> 500 billion years. We can't even comprehend how long that is. Can't even comprehend how long that is. I want somebody to take it and divide it by 90 and tell me how many lifetimes that is. It's a lot of lifetimes. A lot. It would be like 49 billion, wouldn't it? Yeah. What? Uh, 104 is kind of low. Is it 21 degrees? Or do you want to try uh, NGC 4565, which is a similar type galaxy, it looks like. It's an edge on? It's an edge on, watch this. Yeah, go give it, give, give us an edge on. That's probably going to be probably one of the last ones for me tonight. So I'm going to be yeah. heading out at midnight. Let's, do, let's, do, let's do one more 4565. It is up higher. I'm going to do one more NGC 4565 before this, this uh, amateur astronomer is going to pack it in because we have another day of uh, farm work to do. Yesterday we had some milking to do tonight. It's coming upon 1140 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Um, we are not doing uh, any specific research this evening, uh, but we are visiting all the objects, the summer objects that I had not seen. I, there's objects I haven't seen, so I'm quite happily impressed myself. No. No, and you know what? They still haven't proven to me for sure that there's, I mean, how do I say it? I've seen the research of the guy who was trace, tracking stars at the center of our galaxy. The way the stars tracked is what gave him the information that shows that there's a black hole at the center of the galaxy. I'm still not, I'm still not 100% sure that that's what's going on. And I don't think that the scientists, even though they're going to say that they're 100% sure, are 100% sure. Listen, you only have to go as far as our sun and the acceleration of particles off the surface of the sun to find out that science has no idea what's going on at the surface of the sun. So who's going to tell us, who's going to tell me that the scientist knows what's at the center of the galaxy when they don't even know what's accelerating particles off the surface of the sun? That, that's the type of amateur astronomer I am. I'm the skeptic. I am the snarky skeptic astronomer who says that I don't know about a heavy mass black hole at the center of every galaxy. Yes. There's a 
lot that science doesn't know. And it is up to us, the amateur astronomers who are learning and progressing our, our craft, to challenge, just not to just to say, oh yeah, black hole, every galaxy black hole, yee, yahoo, wee, 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 extraterrestrials out there somewhere, wee, 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 no. I'm, an, I'm, an, I'm an observer, I have to observe it. In order for it to be real, it must be observable. To, to observe it is what brings things for me into reality. Um, to just suggest, to have some research suggest that that's what's going on is not an actual observation in my theory. Because I know, don't know enough about the math, so I really have to see it. And that's okay for me. NGC 4565. Faith. Uh, I use faith when I hope for something to happen. I'm hoping for something to happen. And if I'm hoping for something to happen, I'm usually hoping for something good to happen. And if I'm hoping for something good to happen, I really need it to happen. And I'm hoping upon hope that, and with faith, that my hope will, will hope me into the right situation. I mean, uh, hope, faith, it's like the word respectable. What, where, what, what does it really mean? What does it really mean? NGC 4565, let me get the information on it. NGC 4565, are we integrating? Is that our yes. 32, 31, 30, we're exposing, <coughs> exposure, 28, 27, 26. NGC 4565 is a 9.6 magnitude edge-on galaxy, one of the brightest members of the Coma 1 galaxy cloud. It is the largest edge-on spiral galaxy as seen from Earth. Telescopically, it is a fine streak of light with a prominent dark lane running across its length. Tracing the dark dust lane across the face of this galaxy is a challenging activity to undertake with a small telescope. So we're going to be looking for a dark lane that travels the whole edge of the galaxy. Ooh, there it is. Ooh, there's big. And I can see the lane, but it is a challenge to see it go the whole way. Is how they come up with these names for areas of space. Why do astronomers find no other come? Okay, let me just go with the first one. Len Hicks says, Francis, how do they come up with these names for areas in space? They have protocols. They, they, you know, it depends on who's doing it. They could be naming large swaths of objects in space. They could be naming uh, uh, craters on an asteroid. I was looking at uh, nomenclature. That's the word nomenclature like the nomenclature of space would be all the different types of names uh, that they're using for craters and stars most of it originates in Roman I was looking at the asteroid Vesta and every crater on there is named after some cube, uh, 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 concubine uh, uh, some Greek 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 concubine and it's uh, crater after crater after crater is named for some Greek something or other so I don't know what what the protocol is for it but it's it's a mystery to me good question Jack why do amateur astronomers finding new object and comets when NASA could that's that's not true that's a fallacy if you believe that that's that's false uh, NASA in 1983 or 96 or something, they they had a mandate. Now it wasn't it's not law. Nobody's breaking any law, but Congress told NASA that they wanted to find 90 percent of the asteroids that were larger than a kilometer that had an orbit within five million miles of Earth. If there is an asteroid that's bigger than a kilometer.